So, as I mentioned, I'm Kwanya, the president, and the agenda is we're just going to go through the committee talking about what we've been up to this past year, what we haven't been up to this past year, and then plans for the future. So just starting off, it's just basically saying who we are. I know there are several people who signed up to be members um, for the first time, and you're here at the conference. So just so you know, we're a Scottish-wide network for all who work, study, and volunteer in the museum's gallery sector, starting back in the 1930s. I think five years ago or so was the 70th birthday, so we're 75 now. We can get those free bus passes and everything. So our aim is to provide networking opportunities in a friendly atmosphere. So we always say networking. I like to call it socializing, because when you say networking, it freaks me out. So we like to provide opportunities to get to know one another and be a dynamic forum for information and discussion on the issues that affect museum and galleries. And I think we've been trying to do this a bit more and you'll actually see some of our events and activities coming up will be to kind of help foster that communication. And we'll also be looking at ways to feedback, for y'all to feedback to us because sometimes we get asked to you know, comment on something that's happening nationally. And it's really interesting because we're, we're individuals not necessarily like a like an organization of that, that speaks for everyone's, but we do recognize that we would like to give you guys more of a say because sometimes people aren't a part of a major organization. You're not like working at a you know museum of 200 people. It's five of you in your place, and you still have something really important to say about this topic. And we want to make sure that everyone's being heard. And also to encourage creativity, enjoyment, and personal development, something we will be talking about today. So at the moment, we, um, our personal development fund has closed for this past year, but we'll be reopening it for the next year. And so there's roughly 500 pounds we'd usually have in that. And that's for research, training, conferences, trips, cultural attraction, exhibitions. And we'll review them every quarter at committee meetings. Just really to say, if you're a member and you need funding to do Actually, anything, just contact us when this is open. And if it's to benefit you, your career, your personal, yourself, even literally at this point, if it's to benefit your mental health well-being to stay in the sector, please feel free to apply and we'll go from there. Upcoming projects, we have the Sensational Museums project. They originally called it like Transational Museums. It was, it was a top a title. But really, it's just about using all your sensories in a museum and how basically different people interact with museums in a different way, depending on the senses. And it's going to be a UK-wide project, if approved with the funding. And they actually have a contingency for Scotland and actually for training and things like that. So that should hopefully be really good. We also have an advocacy day, which I shall leave for Ellen to talk about later. <laughs> The committee, so 2020 to now. I joined the committee during the first lockdown. I had a child, I was home, I was alone, I was sad, now I'm making another one, who knew? And, <laughs> and I thought, I really kind of miss museums, I miss the sector, I miss like being involved, so I joined then. And it was really nice just kind of connecting with people, even though at that time we couldn't do anything but like look at each other over the computer and talk about how we went outside one time that day. Um, but <laughs> we kind of, gotten better. We've started our first events. We have our first conference. Some committee members have come and gone. I think particularly during 2020, there was a huge turnover. And we're, I think, really looking to build the committee back up again so we can just chug on with life. We do have two outgoing committee members. Adam will be leaving us this, um, well, actually after this conference. And also Joe, who couldn't be here with us today. We have four incoming members who have all accepted their positions. Thank you all for voting. We have an events officer, Alicia. Our membership officer will be Aruka. If you're watching this, I love you because I do membership as well right now, and I can definitely use someone helping to do that part. Lots of paperwork. The secretary is Demi, and our social media officer will be Neve. So we'll welcome them as well. And that is, oh, that, actually, that's, that's still me because I'm membership as well. <laughs> so you haven't got rid of me yet. So at the moment, we have 200 active members. And the way membership works is it runs for every 12 months. So if you join this month, it's next month. So it's kind of consistently rolling over. And we have about 200 now. I'll probably get home, check my email, and we'll have 205. So that's kind of how it works. 
We've re reintroduced box payment online, so you can pay via PayPal, um, even if you don't have PayPal, just use your debit or credit card, or you can transfer your money via box, so hopefully one of those two works well for you. And we're really hoping to engage with more members, and then current members and new ones. So basically, if you're a current member, we're hoping to be doing an activity in your area around Scotland soon, and if you're new, hopefully you'll be joining us. And with that being said, most of our members are based in, we have a nice Inverness, Aberdeen cohort. We do have our Stirling and Perth area, tons of Glasgow, tons of Stirling. I think it's because that's maybe some major population, but we're really missing out a bit further west, a bit more in the highlands, and particularly island people. Like, where are you? We're, <laughs> we're, I think we really need to kind of like focus on that because these are groups and these are like really awesome communities and museums and galleries that we do hope to spread our membership. And that's me talking really fast, sorry. Even though I'm pregnant, I probably had too many cups of tea today. And up next is Nicola, who is our Vice President, and she will be talking you through the Constitution and Code of Conduct. Sorry, I've got to put my microphone on because I'm liable to throw it across the room. So, afternoon, everybody. Um, I will just say, first of all, I know not everybody is ex excited about paperwork as I am, so I will try and keep this brief and simple for everybody. Um, so hopefully on your tables, everybody's got a copy of the new draft constitution for the Scottish Museums Federation. Um, so we have essentially made some changes just to make the constitution a bit more legible or to make the Fed itself more inclusive. Um, so what I would like to do now is just go through the biggest changes that we've made and at the end of each section I'm essentially going to ask you um, if you've got any objections to what we're putting forward and if you have some objections please raise your hand and um, equally if you've got any burning questions as we go through I'm more than happy to answer that um, but also if you really want to talk about paperwork I will be available afterwards. Um, so jumping right in we have um, section 2.1b um, which essentially states that the Fed provides informal learning opportunities through events and a yearly conference. Um, so this section has now been extended to cover any professional or personal developments and the form that they can take. So essentially just making it wider for everybody. Um, so can I ask if you have any objections to this to please raise your hand? Fabulous, moving straight on. Um, point three, we have put um, more inclusive language in throughout. Um, so, for example, we've been removing titles such as professional staff and supporting staff, and we're very well aware that that's a bit um, outdated in this day and age. So, again, could I just ask if anybody has any objections to raise your hand? Excellent, thank you very much. Um, and finally, on this slide, we have the no membership fee membership option, um, which has officially been extended to include volunteers and those who are unemployed. Um, and again, it's just about making ourselves as inclusive as possible. So again, any objections anywhere in the room? Oh, this is fabulous. We're just going to jump right through this. Um, so, slightly longer section here in section 5. Um, so, just to make the language a bit clearer, section 5.2 now states that your annual, annual membership, so your subscription, happens 12 years after you join. So, I think way back in the day, it used to be the 1st of April or on April that your membership would be due. That has since changed every 12 months. Um, and 5.3 is a new section which essentially states that if we were to increase um, prices, for example, for your membership, this wouldn't take effect until the next financial year. So again, it's just making things clearer for everybody. Um, so can I ask again if ND has any objections to these points? Fabulous, I'm loving this. Um, section six is kind of spread across two slides, so I do apologize. Um, 6.3, we would very much like to increase the six ordinary members to 10 on the committee. Um, and we really hope that this would give uh, more people the opportunity to serve on the committee and give us the resources to actually feed that back into what the membership needs. 
And quickly following on from that, we've also developed a new code of conduct, which hopefully should also be on the tables. And the code of conduct is essentially just to define the standards that are expected of the committee. So it's essentially making sure that we are doing the best in our roles for the membership. And that exciting document will also be available on the website once today is finished. Um, and finally, we've brought in a new section, which is 6.7, which used to be section 6.6D. I know you're all so excited about this numbering system. Um, so this is quite a big change. This is student representation has been altered. So we will now have three student representatives to be voted onto the committee by members in the autumn for one year every year. So going back quite a bit, I think we had one student from one university every year. It's then spread to three universities. And again, we're just trying to make things as inclusive as possible so that any student can apply for these roles and be voted in. Um, so that is section six. Does anybody have any objections so far? Excellent, thank you very much. And I think we only have one final point, which is probably the biggest point of the day. Um, so we are proposing to change that voting members becomes members. And this would essentially mean that any member who is a free member, so a volunteer or a student, for example, is allowed a vote in the process of the Scottish Museums Federation. And again, this is just to make ourselves as inclusive as possible and encourage everybody to take part in the voting process. Um, so does anybody have any objections to that final section? I'm really hoping everybody's paying attention and you've not just fallen asleep, <laughs> but that's fabulous. Thank you so much for that. I think that covers everything from myself, so I'm gonna just pass you straight on to Eleanor for the Treasurer's Report. Um, which button do I press? Oops. OK, yep. thank you. Um, I here have four sheets, because when I was looking at the... I could probably introduce myself. I've been the treasurer since 2014, so I've seen changes. I was sitting out the front thinking, oh, I remember the wonderful days, not really wonderful, when you had to actually take money off of people. Oh, yeah, here's your £12, £15, whatever, to, to join up at the table. So that's well gone, although there's a bit more technology going on now. So moving on to the funds, we the sort of traditionally I would only report on this year, but since we've had some such strange years, um, first one, I actually have the, the year before that because 2018 to 19 was the last kind of, which isn't in a slide, I'm afraid, was the last kind of normal year, <laughs> remembering pre-COVID, when it was, uh, you're all looking at that, that was, yeah, that's the next year. So COVID happened about at the end of that financial year, but since most of our uh, expenditure anyway is to do with the conference. It was kind of in the, the previous year. So in a good year, 2018 to 19, the uh, t titles that we have in income and expenditure are very similar. The conference used to be in generally in April rather than May. So sometimes the funding would be in one year and the next year. And this year, we're still waiting to pay for most of what we're paying for the conference. Although we paid for the wonderful food. Hope you liked it. Um, and in the first year, which sounds like a good year, we made our uh, bank went up nearly a thousand pounds. But that was quite a, well, I'll say maybe it was very, very good timekeeping there because traditionally it tends to stay relatively the same, give or take a few, a few hundred pounds. So that uh, was talking about 2018 to 19. Uh, oh, sorry. That's 2019 to 20, where we made a little tiny bit of money. And because that year, 
I think that was the conference that we had in Stirling, and we actually managed to uh, get some money back that we paid out for that, so we did quite well money-wise. But that was quite a big one. But So we came out, as I say, more or less even, but were uh, funds which tend to stay usually somewhere between two and three thousand pounds, depending on how much we spend, are fairly standard. There's the next one, which is April 2020 to March 2021. So there's not really a lot going on. The main expenditure is the website, which is a sort of ongoing cost that we need to pay whatever happens. And we've got admin, but actually I think it must be in the next one that we decided to uh, join Zoom, because so that costs us money as well. So this year, again, there's quite a few blanks. We've reinstated membership, which we hadn't been getting before because we'd frozen it over COVID because not a great deal was going on. We couldn't do a great deal with people. Uh, you see, we've effectively, well, this is to the end of March. We'd spent £22.74 in the conference, so that was going to go up considerably. There's a little bit from the previous... I'm not quite sure why that's there. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so we're... In the red, slightly. So, I say that, uh, as I say, to sort of in a, in a nutshell, most of our expenditure tends to be the conference. Most of our income tends to be membership coming in, and traditionally we tend to subsidise the conference a bit. So, where the membership funding goes to is mostly well. It doesn't all go there, but a lot of it goes towards paying for the conference as well. So. Uh, that's really it. Uh, I'm sure that was fascinating. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Is it? Who is it? <laughs> oh, yes. So I'm Christina, um, I'm the communications officer, um, generally in charge of the website, although I get help from the other committee members with it, um, and I do the newsletter quarterly and the blog, which I haven't really been doing, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I have been struggling to find time for it. Uh, but yeah, so the newsletter goes out quarterly, um, it's really great for giving a rundown of the sector news and SMF news. Um, I also go through and I find jobs for you guys, volunteering opportunities, events opportunities. Um, so it's a really, really great resource and I hope you guys have all been liking it and benefiting from it. Um, if you know of anyone else who would benefit from it, they can join as a member. It goes out quarterly, as I said. Um, it's only £12 per year to be a member, so um, it's quite a good little benefit. Um, and if you have any um, suggestions or ideas of what you would want on the newsletter if you want something new, something else, um, just let me know. You can let me know today um, or you can send us an email. Um, the, our email address is on uh, the brochures and on the conference program and on our website. Um, so feel free to send me an email or just talk to me today. Um, so this is the blog <laughs> which has been a little bit dead in the water and I'm really sorry for that. Um, I've just been struggling to find the time to do it but um, if you guys have any ideas for blogs, I'm very open to them. Um, anything that you want to write about, if you visited an exhibition and you want to do a little exhibition review, if you want to get some more, um, you know, some sort of CPD experience, um, I'm happy and open and just send me an email. Um, that's basically it from me, unless anyone has any questions about communications. No. Okay. okay, last speaker of the day. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> we'll build up the energy. <laughs> So, my name is Ellen. I've been the social media and events officer this year. So, it's been quite a challenge. I'm really excited for Neve and Alicia to come on board and help me with all of that. So, I can only be the events officer. Um, so, first I'll talk about social media. So, essentially this year, we've had really good progression on our online presence. So, thank you everyone that has joined and are following this year, um, working online. 
Um, of course, social media is one of those things, uh, doing between the two. I've kind of been split between that and obviously not keeping up as much, um, but we like to try and keep that as updated as possible and the rest of the committee is supported in that, so that's great um, because all these positions are voluntary and we all have busy lives. So we're really, my whole goal for this year has been working to share stories of museums online and sector updates. So our milestones have been that with Twitter, we've hit over 5,000 followers now, so it's pretty good. Um, and Facebook, that's really taking off. So we've gone, we've gained something in the region of 400 followers in the past year. So that's quite substantial. So now we have over 2,100 followers. And with Instagram, we have almost 1,400 followers. So that's up 200 followers in a year as well. So thank you all for <laughs> paying attention to my funny stories that I try to put up online. Um, that's it for that. So with events, um, like Kanye said, we really had to start over this year um, and really just rethinking and recentering in terms of where we're going. So the first event when we came into um, and were voted onto the committee in August of last year was really starting over again. Of course, we were coming out of the final phases of lockdowns, getting back from our level kind of zones, if we can get back in that mind of going back to level zero, things like that. So the first event that I planned was about what's next, and that was based in Inverness, um, primarily because I was based there and it was easy for me not to travel. Uh, but it was also good because we haven't had an event in the Highlands in a while. So it was really good to get that um, kind of integration back. We had a decent um, turnout. We even had a gentleman from the Ministry of Spanish Culture um, office come and want to be involved and see what we were doing as Scottish Museums Federation, so that was strong. Um, and it was, um, it was streamed online via Facebook Live, so if you do want to see that, that is still on our Facebook, please go and view it. Um, but we really got leaders from the heritage sector in the Highlands. Uh, we work with also Museum Heritage Highland. They do a lot of work in the Highlands, they're very active, so we're beginning our relationship with them as well. And we talked about what's next, like what happened during the pandemic and where we're going from there. Going on, as our confidence is improving with getting back out there, as today proves, you know, good on us, way to go heritage people. Um, we had our second event in March, so a little bit spaced out just because the winter was really hard on all of us. I know I can probably speak for everyone in this room that over the winter we had to do a lot of planning and research about how we were going to tackle this summer with this upcoming season. So it was really strong that we had on the 4th of March talking about museum redevelopment. I know for a lot of museums, you're able to take the time to re-strategize and think about maybe our, maybe our collections and the way that we're displaying them need a little bit of a refresh. Um, so thinking in terms of that, and we went to the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders Museum, and we had Rod with us, who knows his collections inside and out, as probably does a lot of people in this room. And it was a really strong um, outturn from that. Although we have learned that we need to just, there's going to be a nominal fee on events from now on for non-members. It'll be around two pounds just to pay for the tea and coffee. And then members, it'll just be a donation base, so it'll be free for members. If you would like to pay extra money, it is up to you. <laughs> but you're more than welcome to come. As we said, we want to provide you the social opportunities to get to know to people. And I also don't like using networking, so I also find it a very scary word, like Kwanya. Um, so these are just going to be social events, and I, I'm calling them days out. So our next events upcoming, on the 9th of June, we're going to David Livingston Birthplace Museum. So we will probably see a lot of the familiar faces there. In August, and these, the rest of the dates are to be confirmed exact ones, we're going to the Museum of Scottish Fire Heritage with Kwanya. And in September, we're going to be at the University of Aberdeen Special Collections with Neil Curtis. And we're going to try and involve a lot of the students who are on the master's courses there, just beginning off in museum collections, try and get them you know, familiar with what happens next after they finish their courses, and going through things there and meeting up there. And in November, um, I'm just beginning conversations about organizing a one-day seminar about career progression. Um, it'll be based at Culloden Battlefield, so it'll include a visit there, but mainly talking about how you move up in your career and how it's not always a linear progression. Sometimes you make some side steps, sometimes you go down a bit, sometimes you're unemployed a little bit, but it's always you know, building and building up. So there is hope on the side. And I promised you that there would be an exciting opportunity at the very end. We've made it, congratulations, we're here. 
The last thing I want to talk to you about is something that Christina and I are going to be leading on together um, as part of your committee. So this is going to be an associate in um, collaboration with a lot of the larger organizations such as National Museum Scotland, the Museum Association and Museum Gallery Scotland. So essentially we've created a standing committee now to host an advocacy day at the MA conference in November in Edinburgh this year. Essentially what we're going to be doing as Scottish Museums Federation, as the organization that represents people individually within the sector, we are going to be targeting an event to represent museums. So this is going to be a tabling opportunity for you in the main Grand Gallery at National Museum Scotland for a full day. So from 10 to 5, it's looking like that will be tabling to the public. From 5 to 5.30, that will be just getting ready. Half 5 to 6, you'll have exclusive opportunities to be able to table about what you're doing in terms to promote community engagement and well-being with your museum to politician, ministers, etc. Um, and other big players in the community. And then from six, it'll open up to um, attendees of the Museum Association Conference. We would love to see a very good mix of large, small, and independent museums. So please, please, please apply. Keep your eye out on this. Watch this space. So we will be sending out, we just want to make sure that you guys as well, especially because you've come out to the conference, that you kind of have the first kind of taste of what this is going to be. This hasn't been publicized yet. So the specifics as well as the application will be sent out soon, but please feel free to, in, to send an expression of interest to us in a 200 word summary explaining what you'd like to present to our email address. We will be going through these at some point in the summer, and by late summer, you will know whether you'll be able to get a table. And of course, if you're not able to secure a table because space will be limited, you then could be invited to the advocacy event. Does that sound like something everyone would be interested in? Yeah, we think it's a good opportunity to do, um, and to make sure that people aren't just hearing you know, the large organizations' voices through these things so that we're fully creating a picture that's inclusive of our sector to the government to inform future planning for our sector. So thank you all so, so very much for coming today. Um, I really appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at the next conference next year. Okay, thank you very much. Give yourselves all a round of applause.